Hi, this is Richard White with a quick introduction to writing a craps program in Java. Uh, I'm using the BlueJ integrated development environment here, so um, I'm going to create a new project here to play craps. And I presume you know how to play craps. If you don't know the rules, they're pretty simple. Uh, you roll two dice, two six-sided dice, um, and you add the numbers and you get a, a number between 2 and 12 as a result of adding them. If on that first roll you get a 7 or 11, you win. If you get a 2, 3 or a 12, you lose. And if you don't get either one of those, then whatever you did roll on that first roll is what's called your point. Maybe you got a 6 or something. And so if you don't win or lose at first, then you keep rolling the dice until one of two things happens. Either you roll a 6 again and you win, or you roll a seven and you lose. So it's a fun little dice game and we're going to go ahead and try and program it here in Java. It's probably gonna take us about 30 minutes um, because I'm gonna be talking about some of the stuff, but writing the program itself doesn't take that long. Um, because I'm going to be rolling dice in this game, I'm going to be creating a dice class or at least a die class for one of those. And uh, let's go through that process and, and create a die right here. I'm not gonna put all the documentation in here um, this class simulates a die, but I'll put a few things in here and I'll put my name in here. What the heck? And we'll see what we have to do. So when I create this instance of a die, I guess I'm going to uh, be keeping track of the die roll, maybe, um, die roll. And that's going to be an integer. And so when I first construct this, I'm going to set up the die roll to be zero. Uh, and then every time I call the roll method, I'm going to have one method in here. Uh, the roll method rolls the die. And I'll make sure we say it's a six-sided die. And I'm not going to have any parameters for that method, but I will uh, have a return value, which is going to be a number between one and six inclusive. The value of the die roll. Integer one to six inclusive. And so I'm not going to need any pr parameters for that guy. We're going to call this roll. And it is going to return an integer value. And um, I think what I'm going to do here, I'll return, I need to return die roll once I get it. But what is the die roll going to be? How will I get the die roll? I'm going to use the um, math.random feature. Math.random gets me a number between 0 and 0 0.99999. So I'm going to multiply that by 6 and that's going to get me a random number between 0 and 5.99999. Um, I need to add 1 to that so that I get a random number from 1 to 6.99999 and then what I'll do is I'll cast that as an integer. I'll convert it to an integer value so I can store it in this die roll. So something from 1 to 6.999 will round off to 1 to 6. Now, you might already know that this isn't going to work, but I'm going to pretend that it is going to work, and I'm going to do some testing here. So I'll compile it to make sure that it compiles, and that's pretty good. Let me take a look now and run this guy and see what happens here. I'll create a new die here, and let me go ahead and call the roll method. It's returning a 1. Okay, that's cool. Let me roll it again make sure the random feature is working. One again, well, that can happen. Sometimes you roll two ones in a row or three ones in a row. But it's pretty odd to get five ones in a row or six ones in a row. So I'm starting to think that there may be something wrong with this. And uh, you can see how important it is to test your code as you go. So I'm going to take a look at this again. Um, it turns out that the problem here is math.random gets me a number between 0 and 0.999. And this int cast converts that to an integer value right away. And in so doing, it cuts off that 0.999. Whatever the random is, it cuts off the decimal portion and rounds it down to a zero. Zero times six is zero, and zero plus one is one. So this is just always going to be one, unless I make sure that I do this multiplying first. So I'm going to put parentheses around this and compile that and double check then that this works. So let me try running this a few times. I'm going to create a um, new object, and I'll run that roll method and see what happens. There's a 3, there's a 5. So good, I'm getting random numbers now. There's another 5, there's a 2. I want to be careful about off by 1 errors. I want to make sure that I get a 1 and a 6, 
but not a zero and a seven. And that can sometimes happen when you're doing these things. So um, if you were doing really robust checking here, you'd run quite a few tests on this to see how it was all playing out. There's one of my sixes. And have I gotten any ones? I haven't seen any ones in a while, have I? I don't know. Oh, there's a one. But I haven't seen any zeros or any sevens. So I think this might be working the way it's supposed to. So good. So I have my die class there, and I'm all set up to continue. Um, if I wanted to, I suppose I could uh, create a dice roll object. Um, it would make sense because a dice roll is a thing where you have two dice and then you're rolling them and adding the numbers together. And you might very well want to include something like that. I'm going to make this a little bit shorter program and not include that dice roll there, but that wouldn't be a bad thing to have in there. But for this version of this tutorial, I'm just going to use craps here. So um, we're going to play the game of craps. This program plays the game of craps. And we're going to think about the logic of this as we go through and try and develop this a little bit at a time here. Uh, because this is the program, the, the main program here, I can get rid of all of this. And we're just going to be doing the public static void main and trying to figure out then all the pieces that are going to go with all this. So here we go. And one of the things I do when I'm writing a program, I like to put in comments at the beginning. Comments just to kind of explore the flow of the program. So um, let me just, this will give me something to uh, fill in later on. Create objects for the game is something I'm going to need to do. Um, when we're ready to play, I'm going to roll the dice uh, for first the first roll. And I'm pretty quickly going to ask them then, or I'm going to find out um, if they won. I'm going to find out if they lost. And then I'm also going to, if they didn't win or lose, if not win or lose, keep rolling to make point, to match the point. I'm going to do those things. These are the things that I have to somehow figure out as part of this game. So let me go back up here now that I have, think I have some idea of what's going on. Uh, create the objects for the game. I'm going to need to keep track of the dice. So um, I'm going to create a die object, D1. And that's going to be equal to a new die. That's um, the class that I just wrote. I'm going to be creating a die 2 as well. And I think I'm going to need to store my results. When I roll those things, I'm going to need to store my results someplace. So maybe down here, when I roll the dice for the first roll, um, I'm going to need to store those in a variable. So int uh, roll 1, maybe, to match d1. That's going to be equal to d1.roll. And I'm going to have a roll 2 equal to d2.roll. And I think I'm even going to need a variable to keep track of the total. So int roll total is equal to roll 1 plus roll 2. And uh, as I'm thinking about this, I need to test this pretty soon, but I don't really have any kind of interaction happening. Uh, I don't have any print statements, so I'd, I'd like to compile this and test it a little bit. So let me make it a little bit interactive here. I think what I'd like to have them do, system.out.println, let's play craps. I'll say that at the beginning. And then I'm going to say um, system.out.println, press enter to roll the dice. That'll make it a little bit interactive for them. Uh, I need to make sure that they can do that, that they can actually press enter. And in order to do that, I need to have a scanner. And I haven't done that. So I need to import a scanner in here. Import java.util.scanner. And if I'm going to be using that scanner, I obviously need to create a scanner object. So in addition to the dice right here, I'm going to say scanner in is equal to a new scanner. And I'll be getting input from the keyboard. So now it's going to say, let's play craps, press enter to roll the dice. And then down here, I'm just going to say in dot next line. I don't need to store that information in a variable or anything, because I'm just using this to accept input. I'm not going to do anything with the input. So then I'll roll those dice. I'll get the result. And then I'm going to tell them what happened. I'm going to say uh, system dot out dot print line. You rolled a... 
roll one and uh, roll two. System dot alpha print line for a total of, and I'll print out roll total. Let's see how this works. I like this so far. This looks pretty good. Let me see if I've made any mistakes. I'm compiling. That looks pretty good. And let me try and run it and see what happens here. Let's play craps. Press enter to roll the dice. I like that. I hit the enter key. You rolled a four and a three for a total of seven. Awesome. It doesn't really do anything else at this point, but let me try it again and see if I'm getting random numbers. Oh, I got a six and a three for a nine. This looks like it's working more or less just the way I wanted it to. Five and a four for a nine. Awesome. So if I'm pretty happy with that, let's see. Once I get that roll total, I should be able to find out if they won. How do I know if they won? If roll total is equal to a seven or roll total is equal to 11. If either one of those is the case, then system.out.println, you won. Find out if they lost, else if, how do you lose on the first roll? Roll total is equal to two, or roll total is equal to three, or uh, roll total is equal to 12. If I, any of those is the case, then same thing, system.out.println, you lose. And if it's neither one of those, we're going to keep rolling to match the point. But again, I'm going to check this first before I go any farther. Uh, looks like I'm missing something here. Um, oh, I don't know why I put or in there. Let's try again semicolons. I always forget my semicolons. Thank goodness for compilers. And if roll total is equal to 7 or roll total equals equals 11. There we go. Let's try it and see now. So I got a 5 and 6 and that's an 11 and I won. It totally worked. Excellent. And I got a two and a three is a five. That doesn't tell me anything. And I lose, of course, if I get a two or a three or a 12. And I might have to test for a while to see if that works. One of the things you can do, one of the things that's kind of frustrating with random programs is you have to always try and get the random thing to happen. So if you want to cheat a little bit in your testing, you can say, pretend that roll total or, or rather just identify what your roll one and your roll two are. So I just roll these guys, but I'm going to change them. Roll one is going to be equal to um, a one and roll two, I'm going to reset equal to a one. And so that way it's going to reset those and then get my roll total. If I compile that and run that and see what happens, I've kind of forced it to roll a one and a one and it's working. So that's a great way to test random functions if you um, don't want to have to roll forever and try and figure out what's going on. That's just a little testing thing there. All right. Um, well, so the winning is working and the losing is working, but if neither of those is true, what are we going to do? Else, we're going to have to do a bunch of stuff down here. Else, we're going to have to figure out a bunch of things. I guess the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have them roll again. We're going to, we're going to figure out what their point is. Int point is equal to whatever their roll was from that first roll. And now we have to have them roll a bunch of stuff again. So let me go back up and get this information. Again, you can see that uh, all this stuff here, this press enter to roll the dice and getting all this, I've already done this here. And so I'm just gonna copy and paste that down here. The fact that I'm copying and pasting whole segments of my program is a kind of a, an indication, it's a giveaway that I should probably write these guys and make these their own class or something, or make some sort of function that is gonna allow me to easily repeat that code. Again, for this simple program, I'm not gonna worry about it too much, but that's always a good sign if, uh, that you need to rewrite the program if you're copying and pasting blocks of code like that.
So I'm saving the initial roll total. I'm having them roll the dice again. I'm getting their input there. And um, what, ha what happens if I run this right now? You may already know that this isn't going to work. What happens if I run this? If I compile this, it doesn't like the fact that I've already I've already uh, declared that roll one is going to be an integer variable. I'm reusing roll one here. I don't need to come up with another variable. I can reuse roll one, but I'm not going to declare it again. In fact, it won't let me declare it again. Those are the same variables that I had before. So if I compile that now, it looks like it's working. And what am I going to do then with my roll total once I've got that here? Did they win? And how do they win? They would match the point. Did they lose? And how would they lose? They would lose by rolling a seven. So what's going to happen there? Let's see. If roll total, my new roll total, is equal to the point from before, then system.out.println, you matched your point. You win. And did they lose? So let me see what happens here. Else, oh, how do I find out? Else, if roll total is equal to seven, that's how you lose on the next when you're trying to roll your point. System.out.println, you rolled a seven, you lose. Now, if neither of those is the case, let's compile that and see how we're doing. That's good. If neither of those is the case, if they didn't win and they didn't lose, what are we going to do? What happens down here? The thing that happens down here is the same thing that happened up here. We want them to press enter to roll the dice again and do a new roll and find out if they won or lost and then go back up again. We, this whole thing, this whole section here, needs to be part of a loop. We're going to keep doing this until a certain condition is met, until they either win or lose. So because that condition has to be met, I'm going to write a conditional loop for that. And the conditional loop, uh, the main conditional loop in Java is the while loop. So I'm going to, um, what's my condition going to be? I'm going to create a new Boolean variable called keep playing. And keep playing starts out to be true. And my loop is going to say, while keep playing, I could say while keep playing equals true, but this is a little bit cleaner. While we want to keep playing, while the game is still on, while we're going to keep playing here, we're going to do all these things. Let me get my layout fixed here. So as long as keep playing is true, we're going to do all these things. We're going to roll the dice, find out if we won or lost, and then go back up here, roll the dice, find out if we won or lost. We're going to keep doing that as long as keep playing is true. What's going to make keep playing be false? We need to make sure that if they matched their point, in addition to telling them that they won, we need to tell the program that it doesn't need to compete, complete, uh, continue this loop anymore. It doesn't need to continue running that loop. Keep playing equals true. No, keep playing is going to be equal to false now. We don't want to keep playing anymore. Down here also, if they lose, we don't want to keep playing anymore. So keep playing is going to be set to false. And at that point, then we should bail out of the loop. So let's see what happens. Let's compile that and run that and see how that works. So a nine, a nine is my point. So now I have to roll a nine and win or a seven and lose. So I'm going to keep on going. Oh, nine. I matched my point. I won. Worked. It worked. Perfect. Let's try again. Try and play another game. Six. So now six is my point. Oh, but I got a seven. You rolled a seven. You lose. Okay, so this seems to be working the way I want it to. Four, seven. You lose. Yep. This. The logic appears to be just about correct here. I lost with a one and a one on the first one. So my logic is correct. This is the basic game. This, this seems to be working just the way I want it to. A couple nice things we could do at the end here, I suppose, after they win or lose, we can, well, we do want them to be able to um, play again, right? System.out.println. I'm just going to say good game. 
how do I, um, how would I do this over and over? I don't want them to have to enter, you know, start the program again every time they want to play again. Couldn't, couldn't we just have a play again option here? So um, certainly I had to keep playing equals true in here when I was doing this, but I'm going to try a different kind of conditional loop here. The game doesn't include creating these new objects, but it does include the let's play craps and everything from here on down. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a while loop as well. And I'm going to repeat this entire section, all of this. I'm going to repeat all of this in a while loop. And uh, I'm going to do something uh, just for, to make it a little bit different here. This while loop is going to say while true. While true, do all these things. And when you look at this, let me lay this out here. When you look at this, here's the while loop, while true, do all these things down to here. Keep doing that over and over and over. Now, that's an infinite loop, while true. True is always true. So this is going to be an infinite loop unless we give them some way to break out of it. So another thing I'm going to do then at the end of the game, like right after we say good game, this whole thing right here is going to get repeated every time. I'm going to say, right after we say good game, Oh, and I think that good game is in the wrong place, but we'll double check that in a few minutes. I'm going to say system dot out dot print line. Want to play again? And we'll give them the option of saying yes or no. And um, let's do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see what they play or, or what they enter. Uh, I guess that's going to be a string. Play again is equal to in dot next line. So we'll pull the information that they've entered there. So if they're going to enter an N in there, in other words, if play again, I just want to check the first letter though. If play again dot substring 0 comma 1 is equal to a lowercase n, then we're going to bail out. And how am I going to bail out? I'm going to break. Otherwise, if it's anything else, we're going to end up going all the way up to the top. So let's compile that and see what happens. Oh, I'm missing a parenthesis there. Let's compile that, and now let's try running it and testing it. I think I still have a problem here, but let's check and see what happens. Press Enter, 6. I matched my point. I won. Good game. Want to play again? Yes, I do. Let's play craps. I'm to roll the dice. One and a five. I'm still trying to win. A six will win. A seven will lose. Oh, I lost. Good game. Want to play again? Yeah. So you can see it's running through. Oops, it didn't catch it when I, um, I, I entered the wrong thing when I did that. Maybe we can fix that, though. Did you see what happened there? I do this. It says, want to play again, and I hit the enter key and it blew up. I think we need to um, somehow allow for that. Maybe if they say a Y there, then um, or if they just hit the enter key, then it shouldn't hit this here. So how would I do that? Um, I need to trap that. So if play again is equal to nothing, then what does that mean? If play again equals nothing, that means they want to play again. So I'm going to let that pass. Else, if play again equals this, then I'm going to break out. So this is going to accept the first time if I hit an Enter key. It's not going to do anything. I'm just going to pass on through. Uh, I'm just trapping that character there. Uh, let an, enter, an empty string pass. Let's try this and see what happens now. All right. I think we've got a good little program here. Let's see what happens. So we're rolling the dice. Want to play again? If I just hit the Enter key, it's accepting that now. It's passing it through and accepting it. Um, press Enter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I lost. Want to play again? I'll try the yes. The yes still works. And so I'm losing. And what happens if I say no? 
then nothing happens. So I guess the very last thing I need to include in there is if we break out of this loop, once we break out of this loop, and that's the while loop right here, the while true loop, if we break out of this loop, that means that we're not playing anymore. So I need to say system.out.println, goodbye, thanks for playing. And that looks like that's a great little program. Let me go ahead and compile it and make sure it works one more time. But I think that's more or less what we're looking for. Want to play again? No? Goodbye. Thanks for playing. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how to write a craps program there. Here we've got a main method with the logic correctly implemented. And we've got a die class here that uh, rolls random dice. Hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.